Do I see it as a failure? It's one chapter that I've learned, but I don't see it as a failure yet because I feel that I want to bring it back. Creative Conversations. Zook family, welcome back. It's another chat with a regional local superstar. And since the beginning of Zoot Digital, there's been one guy I wanted to talk to, literally just one. And I've been knocking on his door. We've done Ferry Corsten, we've done Joe V from Netflix. We've done so many. But if there was one person that summed up the success of Malaysian music, it is this guy. He launched Zoot KO, got it all started years before I even existed in this country. <laughs> He is a DJ who represented Malaysia at Tomorrowland. He is a hit singer. He is easily the most fashionable guy Come I on. know. He's a trendsetter. <laughs> Good friend of mine, Emanuele from Living Cool, thinks this guy is dope. Quote, Blink, thank you for taking the time, man. This is a special moment. Well, it's good, man. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. You know, I always have great conversations with you. So, so yeah. Hey, Blink, come on, tell people. So we, this goes out to not just a Malaysian crew, Singapore, Zook at Sea, Hong Kong, but the upcoming Zook crew in yes. Vegas, people who are checking in to find out what's the brand about. And you are a man who is in the DNA for Malaysia. Tell us about Zook over the years. Tell us what it means to Malaysians. Uh, well, you know, re rewinding back, that was a, a too much of a big of an intro because I, I mean, Cho was the one that started Zook, but I was there in terms of the music, you know, um, I think uh, how we adopted um, Zook's uh, DNA from, of course, the core roots of Singapore and how we translated it into uh, the Malaysian market. Um, you know, back then there was no EDM, you know, it was still purely dance music as we know, you know, progressive house, trance, techno. Um, and uh, when Zook KL launched, R&B hip hop was the biggest uh, kind of genre. Uh, that was the MTV generation, so the Beyonces, the Ushers, you know. So um, that actually uh, was the big hit for Zook KL, the Thursdays nights. I think until today, after 16 years or at least two decades in the industry, I've not seen a hip hop night as big as Ghetto Heaven on Thursdays, you know. Um, even I was there every day. Um, I mean, I started DJing. Um, in December 2004, but 2004, uh, March, April, it kind of opened. So, but I was there from even before it was built and even on the opening. And I was just there week in, week out, even before I worked for Zoo. I was like there three, four days a week. So I would actually know all the crazy stories, the fight stories, the, you know, even whatever stories, you know, what, what the notorious stories to the, the golden era stories, you know. So, so yeah, man, um, let's, uh, well, it's, it's too much to say in this one conversation, but yeah, let, let's see how this goes. I mean, Blink, without even referring, I want to, we will definitely move on to your DJ career because you are a trailblazer for DJing, especially for this country. I mean, you represented them in Tomorrowland. That's a massive, massive achievement, but you also brought in some of the biggest names that's ever come to this country. And I saw um, last year, Hardware himself give you a very emotional post dedicated yeah. for you introducing him to Malaysia. I mean, tell me, every DJ that I've looked after in the last two years has said, man, it's Blink up here. He used to take us for Nasty Lamac. He took us down a Pudu for Charles Hewitt. Everything else, right? You're an amazing host for these guys. You're a great ambassador for the music scene here. So tell me, over the years, what have been the mega highlights for you? Because you've played with everyone. Yeah, I, I think that there's just so many highlights. You know, I, I think with this MCO as well, I, I look back, you know, and I, I think like, I just saw a scream tweet um, on Twitter. It's like, you know, we don't feel um, like we we owe anyone anything in this world in terms of being a DJ, but it just feels a shame. Like we've worked so hard for this 20 years and suddenly see like everything go in just a few months, you know, but so I look back and and I rewind it and I fast forward back, but it still feels like day one for me because I think I'm just that interested in music and I love music in general from, 
hip hop to dance to pop, you know, whatever the genre is, I'm, I'm not genre specified. And I, I feel that that's why me as um, the booking guy for ZooKL worked. Not to say that anyone else could not have done it, but I'm just saying that I'm not biased to any genres. I really feel that um, I book the DJs for the market and also what is trendy at that point of time that could work. I'm not just going to book Solomon just because he's the biggest DJ just for Malaysia because it will not bring back the revenue, although it might bring credibility. But I may bring someone like Marshmallow before he's big, before he was a commercial success, when Trap was cool, and that still kind of adds profile to the club while making money, you know? And so I think the balancing thing is very important. But in terms of highlights, there's so many highlights. I think with Zook, with my career, I, I don't know. Of course, Hardwell, you know, um, I think Illinium was a shocker for me two years ago. Now he's a mega star. I have crazy stories. Um, you know, me eating again nasi lemak with him. And uh, we sold actually zero pre-sale tickets before the show. But then when we rocked up, it was like a complete sold out show on Thursday. Everyone was singing his song. So I can do, I can go deep into these stories, but there's so many. I mean, Marshmallow before he was big, Yellow Claw before they, was, they were big. I try to at least try to book the DJs before they are global superstars. You know, I mean, of course I worked with FSA as well. We had Calvin Harris, we had Afrojack, all these guys before they were untouchable in, in terms of a club kind of fee, right? So uh, there's so many highlights, man. I mean, and, and with every mm, trend or I would say wave of, of each year or two, we get the highlights. Like example, the past one and a half years, hardstyle has been the biggest genre in Malaysia and we had sold out shows nearly even though it's on Thursdays, Wednesdays, Sundays, you know, with even guys with Sub-Zero Project, the fresh guys, we have the tweakers. So it really depends. I think all these are highlights. Although I'm not a hardstyle DJ, but I'm still very excited about dance music in general. So yeah, man, I think that's the Zook exciting part. You have this overbearing positivity. You have this overbearing enthusiasm, which I think really comes across in everything you do. I've seen your School of Pop Nights. I've seen your Saturday Night Dance. I've seen you bring so much infectious energy that I don't think it's an overstatement, no matter how humble you are, that there are people that go to Zook just to see you. Um, I was one back in the day when I first moved here and it was the old Janan Ampang Zook. You're always bringing what I think is so ne a huge necessity for a DJ, which is an energy that interacts with the crowd and you're an amazing mic guy as well. But that mic speciality has now moved into singing and I see that you've had a huge success with tracks. Numbers is one I really like. So tell us yeah. how that came about. So, so that, I mean, from example, I, I always try to like speak to the, to the young ones. I mean, my team as well, you know, some of them are not confident with the mic. Um, to be honest, I was a progressive house DJ like two decades ago. You know, I, my Sasha and Digweed is like my heroes, but with me, I'm not as, I'm not a, a very anal, again, genre specified guy. So like I evolve with times, but I follow my heart. I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon just because I have to. If not, I would have been a trans DJ or a hardstyle DJ, right? But it's just that I like hardstyle. Even back in the days, like 10 years, 15 years ago, when it was big in Malaysia, I actually did have a different moniker. No one knows this. I even played in hardstyle events, but I, I generally like that kind of sound. So I add that and I just organically became a open format DJ just because I had to. So I started with Progressive House, then there was break beats. I got into turntablism. That's why I know how to scratch. Um, and hip hop is my roots. Then I went into electro with Lapsa, you know, made this whole electro movement. And then of course, the big Goldfish and Bling project that got us to Ultras, Tomorrowland, EDC, you know, and after the whole EDM big boom, it saw a dip and you had to be an open format DJ to kind of cater um, to a mass audience, especially we're a Zook, you know, we're, we're, we're not an underground club or we're not a hip hop club, but we're everything, right? So for the main room, we needed to be that. And I always take it as a challenge. If you're a good DJ, you just need to adapt. And 
I adapted, I became an open format DJ. I really enjoyed myself and I think it became full circle because, because of my turntablism skills, I could actually adapt to fast mixing to any kind of genres. And because I was an open format DJ, you need to know how to use the mic. So I never knew how to use the mic, to be honest. It was Alvin that was always on the mic because he was a hip hop DJ. So, and I'm always, yeah, I, I fed off that energy, you know? So I'm like, okay, then watch hip hop. And I had, I kind of have the hip hop in me because I like hip hop. So I was like, okay, let's try. So I just started, man. I, I had no, no, no teachings, you know, I think it naturally just came about. And because actually how this singing thing came about was, because I was so confident the past three to four years using the mic as a hype man on DJ sets, it gave me this thought like, hey man, um, I'm quite confident using the mic now. And since I was a kid, like six years old, five years old, I always wanted to be a singer. Um, that, that was just in me. I have loads of pictures of me just trying to sing songs like, you know, and, um, and, and I was like, you know what? And I watch a lot of motivational videos. I read a lot of self-help books. And I, I always remember this line from especially Gary V that I follow. And he says that the biggest, I think what we see, um, the biggest sadness you see is the regret in a 70 year old eyes, you know, because when you get there and you see that sadness of regret, you can't do anything about it because you just can't turn back time you know but so I, it woke me up and said like you know i'm confident with the mic now and i don't want to feel that when i'm ceremony and said shit i could have sang so i was like you know what and it was a time where alvin kind of stopped djing his priority was not djing and um we made less edm it was open format i was like you know what it's a vibe man now look at the best artists in the world of course they can sing a lot of them are great singers but a lot of them are not great singers too it's just a whole character a whole kind of persona the vibe you know and i was like you know what? i'm gonna give this a go and so i i just yeah made made the songs write the lyrics and i just went with it and and with all entrepreneurs you know they say you can always have a great strategy but the strategy don't usually work out. It's only when you start doing and then you will figure out how to get there, you know, and that's how you become successful. So I just put myself into this shoe, man. Hey, dude, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? And you, yeah. you shot and you created it and you build that dynamic yourself. And I think it's phenomenal. And congratulations, because I think Thanks, you've, man. You, you've, you've got a great voice. It's so well received. I see your stories like it takes me an hour to get through them with people reposting and giving you shout outs and giving you love. It's phenomenal. And you did it. Mike, you, you've literally taken this mentality, which I said at the beginning, is super positive, And you've said, right, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try turntablism. I'm going to try DJing. I'm going to try the mic work. I'm going to try singing. And that's an awesome piece that will put me on to a question I love to ask people in these conversations, which is Blink. What would be your advice to someone's watching this who has seen and you've got a lot of blinkettes out there who who blinkers who who, yeah. who have mad love for you and blink you live your best life it's literally I, i'm not being cheesy you do you, you get up there you do the things that you love and you do it well with passion let's say there's some people out there especially because of this COVID time who are super nervous about taking the steps they want to take instead even maybe nervous about taking the steps they think they should take. What would be your advice to people starting out, man? Well, I'm, I'm going to say this straight up. I'm starting again, too. You know, um, uh, I'm going to have a new cafe next month and I'm going to be behind. I'm going to be behind the bar making matcha. You know, I'm starting too. So I, I feel that the only advice that I can give them is you just have to try because especially if you're on a young age it may not be the thing that you will do when you're in your 30s you know because i was lucky to be able to find what i loved at a younger age but let's look back always have a plan b maybe this is what i'm going ah, okay i think this is a, an advice from me it may not work for everybody, you know, because um, everyone is different, right? Everyone's wired differently in, in this um, world. But I would say that 
what made me feel this passion and also kept me alive in this industry till today is that I had more than one job. You know, um, when I started picking up DJ, I was in college. Then I was in advert. I worked in an advertising agency for six to seven years while DJing at Zook. Then I became Zook's management staff and DJing. You see, even though I was a DJ and had played Tomorrowland and Ultra, I was still Zook's management. You know, I always had something stable while fueling the creative um, side of me. And that gave me a uh, more emo, I would say st stability in emotion to kind of like create because I feel that a lot of people are scared because with creative work, I think the returns is not fast and it takes a long time unless you're very lucky, right? And because you need to pay bills. I mean, this is the reality of life, right? So I feel that you just have to work harder and try as much things, but also have a safety net. You know, if you love music, work at Starbucks and then do the music at, at night. Work at McDonald's, work at a cafe, work at anything that you think that you're comfortable with and then do, do what you love, right? I mean, I just took the advertising route because I was a graphic designer and then I couldn't take it too. And then I had a break for a year and then suddenly Zoo calls me up and say, hey, you know what? The head of marketing is leaving. Um, why don't you want to do this? Then I did that, you know, and I started from ground zero again. I feel that I've started from zero three, four times already. Let's not talk about the DJing, huh? A lot of people just see me as that DJ, you know, that, oh, you know, has done so much and, and so many things. But I always look back and I'm starting from zero again. I'm going to be the matcha guy from, from no November, you know? And yeah. I think Ling, that's super inspirational because I've been to Nasi Le Magla. I, I've uh, been to your nights. I will definitely come and support your matcha. But I think you hit a huge nail on the head because I think too many young people worry about, hey, look, they don't realize Amazon took 30 years. It's like, but Jeff Bezos, he's made it. Um, I spoke to Katrina from Alert Club Aloha and Rob Duck, and she formulated her idea of a spinning studio about six years before she did it. Right. And these things take time, right? And as you say, you're the first person which I really admire to say, guys, don't fear day zero. And I, I would say that the hustle of getting started is 10 times more enjoyable than believing you've made it because you learn more on the way up, right? Starting from zero is a learning curve and it keeps things interesting, exciting for you. Yeah, and um, I, I have some bad news as well to um, to announce, you know, like right now, that is that I may have to stop Nasi Lemak for a while, you know, because of COVID. I mean, the now these things are like uh, learning curves, you know, with FMB, the margin is so little. I think the plan was to become, I had a very big goal to become like a KFC of Nasi Lemak, but because COVID hit right like on the third or fourth month, and now that my margins are not enough to cover my overheads because I was supposed uh, to open three to six in two years, but I don't see it as a failure yet because I feel that I want to bring it back, you know, but so many things, Zara, H&M, such big companies are closing. I mean, there is no, there's no fail proof, you know, I, I mean, as we see, man, look at last dance, Jordan loses too, right? In the beginning days, right? He kept on losing to Detroit. That's why he bulked up these kind of um, lessons drive you to be the better businessman, to be the better basketball player, you know? I would tell you, it's 100% not a failure because I went there, take COVID out of the equation, it's an awesome restaurant. I'll be back multiple times with my team. Not first time because of you, for sure. But I didn't go back because of you. I went back because it was an amazing concept, really good food. And therefore, one thing I really respect about you, Blink, is you have that attention to detail. You have that you inject that passion. I keep going on about your positivity, man. You throw that into what you do, which brings me on to another aspect. You're a really good online marketer. You're someone that, I, I love Blink Eats. Um, I watch it. It gives me advice on where to go. It's beautifully shot, your attention to detail, and it's honest. Like I watch your Saturday station episode yeah. recently, and you're like, okay, I like this, but this bit not so much. It, it's, it's like Chris, you and Chris Chu, dream team. You and uh, Goldfish, dream team, man. You, you are. You're like the Jordan getting your Pippen and getting your your Rodman around you. But 
Blinky, it's online marketing, man. You, you've really nailed that. Yeah. I, I, let's talk about beats for a while. You know, um, again, to all the to the young ones, you know, it may not be the first thing, second thing, third thing, fourth thing. It might be the same idea. You know, I've been writing about food since blog days. And then after me and Ashley tried to do like a, a Walao channel because both of us are Laos and it was too long. You know, I think sometimes a great idea may work not at that certain time, but maybe later on in life, but you just got to keep trying. Like I feel Beats is still not where we want it to be because this is a topic that I have uh, been speaking with everyone around me in uh, recent months is that I feel that uh, it's no, I mean, it happens worldwide, right? But racial segregation is very rampant in Malaysia right now, okay? And I feel that maybe that was also one part that Nasrul Ma'la didn't work because a lot of uh, non-Chinese would not go to SS2 to eat, you know? So um, why? That's just how it works. Not everyone is like us, you know, I will be dining in every suburbs or every warungs or every coffee shops. Not everyone are like us. So with that, I feel that with urban content, especially English content and also English music, our reach is not there yet, you know, because I think a lot of non-speaking like English speakers will not watch this kind of content. You know, so we are still finding ways. We love how it looks. I think, you know, one minute is perfect. Why is it good? Where is it? How much? Bam, right? Bite-sized content. It was made for Instagram, but we're still figuring out a way, you know? I think the problem of Malaysia is unlike Indonesia and Thailand, where the whole country kind of supports and is very proud of each each person you get where i'm coming from because of language i have blinkers i have blinkers um zoom calls after the radio show and these are questions i always ask the youth why is it this why is it that way and i think i've concluded it's also because of language you know um i think we don't we all don't speak a common language hence that that's why there's the segregation it's interesting that you reaction to it because from my perspective, it's doing incredibly well. Um, I, right. I, I love what you do. Uh, I, I regularly tune, I look forward to it. I think the fact that it's a minute, it's crisp enough. I can enjoy it when I ride the cable car back to Wana. I love the way it looks. As someone once said to me, uh, Blink and, and Chris's content is easy on the eye. It's nice to look at. Um, it's relaxing. Um, I even loved your tour videos, man. When you went to play Zoot Singapore and we catch you getting on the plane and we catch you shooting out. It's just really well shot stuff. So if you see, that's another thing I really admire about you is you see ways to improve. I see a product that I think is great and you yourself self-criticize and say, how can I make this more appealing to A, B, C, D, E? But then that's the mark of someone who's going to be successful because you never rest on your laurels. That's why your nights are still booming. You still give 110% in all your club nights when you've been doing it for two decades. I mean, that, that kind of energy, passion, commitment is exactly why you're the success you are. Um, Blink. I've wanted to chat to you ever since we started. I love the fact that you took the time for us and I greatly appreciate it. I love what you and Cher and Yin and Mac and Goldfish and everyone did that paved the way for us to open up here. There would be no Zoot Genting if it wasn't for the hard work you put in for over a decade. I mean, we are infants in comparison. I told you that all the DJs say to me, you know, Wayne says to you from Zoot Singapore, man, you're, you're one of the best ambassadors for the brand that we are just we're riding on your shoulders dude because you you paved the way for us and to to discuss you with such warm smiles that they say to me they get here after like a seven hour flight they sit down the first question is always like man it's always how's blink how's lincoln how's share and, and and that's a culture that's not a club it's not a venue it's a culture it's a fa it's a zook family which we love 
And uh, dude, I, I will always appreciate you taking this time to talk. And it, as you say, we talk in private. I love it every time. So many congratulations to what you are doing and how well you've done and how well you'll continue to do. And uh, lastly, it's amazing for me because I got this text from Emanuele and you guys, I think we're in the US of A or you're in Italy or something. You just went, dude, I'm with the best DJ from Malaysia. And I was like, oh my God, it's Blake, of course. <laughs> and, and he, he man is uh, a superstar now. He is like a superstar now. So how did you end up meeting him? I mean, I know you're a fashionable guy. I know you're arguably, if not the most trendy guy, you and Asha, like, I, I feel scruffy compared to you guys. Too. <laughs> when was this? When was this? He texts me when you guys were abroad and he said, uh, Joe, I'm with the best DJ in Malaysia. So I, I open up and it's you and Asha here meeting lunch together. Oh. Living, uh, for everyone, you got to check out Living Cool. Living Cool is a photographer. I gave him his first. Oh, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I know. It's uh, how, yeah, actually, how did you meet him? Emmanuel was the first ever club photographer I had in Aura, which was owned by Tony Fernandez back in the day. Uh, I was in London. It was in Mayfair. He used to come down on Friday and Saturday night. He used to make my club videos. He used to take photos. We were great friends. He exploded. Uh, he's now traveling the world with the weekend. He's his yeah, best, yeah, man. best friends with Bella Hadid. Like he is with the beautiful people all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw him in Hong Kong when he came over to do a pop-up store. And then one day I'm just sitting there and he texts me and, I, and he goes, Joe, I'm with this uh, incredible DJ. And I was like, you know, the mini simulation, I, I just knew. You take you take DJ, you take Malaysia, you take fashion, you put it together, you got Blink and Ash, right? No, I think it was, what, what, no, it was, where was it, man? It was. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, it was in Rome, bro. Yeah. Right? Rome, right? Yeah. yeah now I remember because how we I got to meet him was I wanted to do a pop up for Living Cool here. We were discussing on the um on the chances of doing it. You know, of course, now that we can't do anything, but we, yeah. So uh, actually, Ida introduced. So um, yeah, it was uh, funny, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, now it, it, it small world, but small you, world. you love your fashion, right? I see you posting. Like I saw yesterday, you post about the Adidas Crocs, which kind of blew my mind a bit. Like Crocs, Crocs were my chefs. Like if yeah, I yeah. Like, the food, dude, they're wearing those to stop their toes from being chopped off when they drop knives, and now Adidas are doing Crocs. Yeah, yeah. So, Cro so tell Cro me about your love of fashion, man. I mean, I, I've I've been into fashion since I was a kid, to be honest. I, I think it was uh, my uncle that really liked fashion. And, and I always tell this story on Instagram. I think how I got into fashion is all because of basketball, you know, um, even music. So practically, if you rewind it back all the way to my childhood, it was because of Michael Jordan and because of basketball. And from the sport, I like shoes. And from the shoes, uh, I like the culture of African American culture, and I like hip hop. And from hip hop, you want to be the, uh, the, having the swag, right? And you got into fashion, so it was all linked to actually basketball. And from then, I just got really addicted to sneakers. I collected shoes since I was like seven or eight years old. It's a, uh, it's a mad, it's, it's mad, mad, mad. It's a mad problem, um, and uh, and because of that. This overall, I, I I just like fashion in general, so 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 that's that. I think it's uh, uh I I feel it's not forced, you know. So yeah. I have I have two last questions before you go. Yeah. Are the Lakers gonna win a championship, or is Jimmy Butler gonna stop them? Nah, you know, uh, I just I spoke to the the guys who I I I speak with basketball. LeBron's not in my top three, by the way. I mean. Yeah, I love, love, love what LeBron is as a basketball player. His whole more than an athlete thing. I follow him. I have the biggest respect for him as an athlete, right? I love him. Super LeBron James. But I just think it's because the way I play and the, the way I like basketball is not how he plays. That's why I don't like him. But of course, if you talk about accolades, he's in the top three. My top three is Jordan, Iverson, and Kobe, right? So these three are my top three. So, um, but for me, I think he will win it. I want him to win it. Just, but I really like Heat. You know, I, 
I don't think this Heat team can beat them if Bam and Dragon doesn't come back. You know, it, it's such a shame. If it was the full Heat team, I think it'll give them a good fight. But even with one less, I, I, yeah. And I think LeBron and AD is just way, way crazy. And you can see from the first few games, I think they, they put the big man strategy on Heat. I think they're having problems, you know, with uh, McGee and with Howard in, in, in play. I think it's tough, man. You know, they're big. They're huge, man. But I also think I'm a huge fan of Alex Caruso. Yeah, like, I like him too. Fly shooter. And they've got Kuz in the background. They've got some real industrial players there, man. It's, it's, no, they've got Rondo. Rondo, Rondo. Rondo is doing such good stuff. I mean, he's experienced for that kind of level, right? So I, for me, I, I want, actually, I want Lakers to win just because uh, for, for Kobe, man. I mean, I just got Kobe done right here, man. Wow. That's Kobe right there. That's man. nuts. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I, basketball is my life, man. I mean, if <laughs> I, I wanted to be an NBA player before I was honored to be a DJ. I mean, I never even thought about being a DJ when I was a, a kid. All I wanted to be was an NBA player. I, I never knew that you had to be seven foot tall or six feet five at least. <laughs> do you know, do you know uh, if anyone is watching and saying who the hell are they talking about and you want to get an introduction just go and check out just follow the lakers you'll see some amazing <laughs> plays or go on to a uh, tnt's channel and watch charles barkley and Shaq rip into each other because that's a great introduction my last question Blake, before you go because i know you're a busy guy you've taken a lot of time out to talk to us is for this this one is a really important question because i feel you're super qualified to answer this Describe what Zook means to you, to anyone watching this video. Zook is a brand, Zook is a home, Zook is a club. Just let us know your feelings on, on what Zook means. I've always said this, you know, Zook is second home to me. So I feel that I'm kind of lost at this point of time. Like, although I'm always positive, I always got things to do on the side. I mean, we didn't touch on 33.3, my creative company as well, you know. So, um, I, you know, two years now, I have this creative company and we've done, uh, I would say, uh, I'm, I'm very proud some some work that we've done, especially flying the drones for Avengers Disney for TNJ, for Mahathir and New Year's Eve and uh, the, the rest of the ministers and the, the Malaysians. And, uh, you know, we've done the music videos for all the biggest stars like Yuna, Joe recently. So um, that's one project that I'm really proud of. And uh, we're trying to be an innovative, uh, creative solution place. We're not like, we don't want to be called an agency and we just want to be a, an ally to uh, corporations, non-corporations, you know, to create good work that could bring value to the customers you know so that that's that has been something i've been like uh really proud of but it's still zook you know at the back of my mind uh, every day i just think like oh wow I, i'm just so not used to it not going to zook because when you've been going to this place for 16 years it's i have i would say i spend more time at zook than my house all my houses put together right so it's true and uh, what can I say about Zoop? Uh, I don't know, it's it's just an, it's an establishment that I feel that every youth will go through in terms of clubbing life. You know, um, you graduate from the, the Zoop school, the school of Zoop, you know. I think um, when it went to Jalan Tun Razak, it was a little bit different because of the construction and um, the convenience to the place, uh, hence, uh, and also because of the saturation of night spots in KL, you know, a lot of the suburban ones, so it's different. But it's, yeah, I, I always tell people, you know, I don't own Zoo KL, but I just feel like it's like my baby, man, even though it's not mine, you know? Uh, I think with everything I do, um, uh, it's, it's a very pride thing when everything I, I do for Zoo KL, you know, I, I really, uh, it, the entertainment team was just myself, you know, I, I put everything, I, I would say, yeah, I, I get very emotional, bro. Like, you know, I think the last few months, you know, it's very transparent, this conversation. So the last few months before even we went to MCO, you know, there, there, there were things spoken about and I get very emotional because 
I really felt I, I I put a lot of time into the club. You know, um, I would be there day, I would be there night, Friday, Saturday, Thursdays. Uh, to be honest, I don't see anyone else doing that. I'm gonna be straightforward. You know, I yeah, I uh, you know I'm in the day doing marketing stuff. I'm there at night because I like the the nightlife. I like the music. I like the team. And um, yeah, man, it's just my everything, bro. Like uh, uh, when I was taking care of DJs, I was 110% with them. I guess that's why you say when they actually come over and they ask for me because once they land, I'm already texting them. You know, back in the days, I would be even at the airport receiving them. Whatever they want to do, I will give them a, I will plan out a great itinerary for them, bringing them to the best foods, wherever they want to go, you know, I would put myself in their shoes as a DJ in a different city. What do they want to do? Of course, the language helped because I could speak music language, you know, and um, yeah, I would be there in the day in the office. I'll shoot out, you know, when they arrive and it'll be day and then back to the club when they play right until they finish, send them back to the hotel. They're done. You know, it, that was that it was just I was a one-man team, you know, for a very, very long time until I had uh, help because it just became too big and too much, right? But I was doing it all alone, man. You know, I would check them in from the hotels. You know, I, I mean, Yin saw me. Uh, she was shocked. I was, I was visiting Kyo when it just opened, but I was actually, I left after five minutes because I walked over all the way to Maya just to check a DJ in, just to make sure, you know, because I... I, I love I love what I do, man. And uh, you know, Zuke is everything to me, man. So I really want to see what's the future for I mean Zuke in terms of the whole brand. I'm excited what you guys have for Vegas. You know, um, that's a big boy thing, and uh, just to see how it plays out. You know, because so many clubs in Vegas also is not what it used to be. So, but I, I always believe in Zook's vision and innovation. So I'm just very excited to see what's happening, man. Link, thank you so much for your time. It's been freshly honest. It's been inspirational. It's been passionate as everything you do. And uh, I've really loved it. It's, it's something that I've looked forward to and it literally matched the expectations I set for it. Stay safe, stay COVID free. Um, cool, man. Ash, best to everyone in your circle. Thanks, bro. Send, send my regards to everyone at uh, the whole Zoo group as well. And uh, I can't wait to see you soon. For sure, bro. Thanks for having me, man. Take care. Bye. Touch me with your frequency. Touch me with your frequency.